Hi folks, let's talk about line integral of a scalar function, and what this means. So first, let C be a curve in the xy plane. So in three space, got the x-axis over here, y-axis over there, z-axis on top. So the xy plane is this flat place on the bottom, it's the floor. So I've got some curve in that floor. All right, um, with parameterization, r of t equals x of t, y of t. So at each time t, we get an x value and a y value. This thing doesn't go on forever. It's for t between some a and some b. All right, so we've got this curve. Now let's also suppose we have a function of two variables, f of x, y. And suppose that the curve c is in the domain of f, so that at each time t, we have f on r of t equals f of r of t equals f of x of t, y of t. So at each time t, we get a height given by the function f. So this height is given by the function f, and we get a kind of a curtain or a fence. This integral Um, which splits up into time goes from A to B, F with R plugged in, that's the X of T, Y of T, and then times the magnitude of R prime of T, DT. So here's the line integral of function F along curve C. And I hope you notice, if you look right here, now imagine for a moment that f is the constant one function. So if this is one, you get exactly the formula for arc length. So what does this integral measure? It measures the area of this curtain or fence. So it measures the area of this curtain or fence, not but just one side of it. Let's do an example. Okay, let's set it up. We won't do the integral all the way out. So let f be the function x, y plus y, and let c be the upper half of the unit circle. What does that look like? All right, there's the upper half of the unit circle. And we've got this function, x, y plus y. We want to integrate it over this curve. First, I'll write the formula. All right, so this gives us an idea of what we need. Um, I'll need a parameterization. All right, so we need a parameterization R of T because we're working with the upper half circle. Um, let's use polar coordinates, that's circular. So I'll replace x with cosine of t. I'll replace y with sine of t. All right, and I'm almost but not forgetting something. Um, this would go around and around and around the circle infinitely many times. Um, we only want to go from, so here t is zero, or the angle is zero, up to pi. All right, so now we have r, we can find r prime. And now that we have r prime, we can find its magnitude. Since we're squaring, the minus sign doesn't matter. All 
Oh, the one trig function, uh, the one trig identity I know that simplifies to one. All right, so that's some of what we need. Next, let's write out f of rt, which looks like f of xy, except um, with r plugged in. So instead of instead of xy plus y, it will be cosine of t, sine of t, plus sine of t. Because that's what we replaced. Um, that's what r of t gives us cosine of t in place of x and sine t in place of y. And that is all we need. We're ready to set up our integral. All right, now, normally there would be a magnitude of r prime right here, but that happens to be one. So the integral is just this. Um, and it's not bad. Um, you can do this one with a u sub, u equals sine of t. And it's uh, straightforward apart from that. 